Good evening. I would like to call the meeting to order. I am Superintendent Monica Merritt, and welcome to our July 23rd, 2019 meeting for the Board of Education. This first portion of the meeting this night is the board's organizational meeting. So on this evening, we will choose a new board officers for the 2019-20 school year. I would like to begin this meeting this evening by introducing or having asking the board members to introduce themselves beginning with my left. Hi, good evening. My name is uh, John Lazarowitz. Thank you for coming out. My name is Leonardo Savage. Thank you for coming out. Uh, Patty McCoy, thank you so much for being here. Hi, I'm Kate Borninski. Nice to see everyone tonight. Hi, Patrick Keogh. It's great to see so many new faces. Good evening. I'm Anupam Chugsidhu. Thanks for being here. Good evening. My name is Doug Brooks. Thanks for coming out. I would like to ask my core team members to introduce themselves, beginning with Debbie Piaz. Hi, I'm Debbie Piaz. I'm the Chief Finance and Operations Officer. Good evening, Liz Vartanian, Human Resources. Good evening, Kurt Tiskwood, Student Services. And I would like to acknowledge and thank my assistant, Miss Elizabeth Adams, for taking the minutes for us on these evenings, as well as the man behind the scenes, that is Charlie Jones, who video records these meetings for people that cannot be in attendance. So I'd like to begin this meeting this evening asking for a motion for the adoption of the agenda for the organizational meeting. Is there a motion? Madam Superintendent, I move that we adopt the uh, agenda of the organizational meeting. Second. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Motion carries. The agenda will be adopted as presented. I would now like to invite a motion for the nomination of the President of the Board of Education for the 2019-20 school year. Are there any nominations for the Office of the President? Ms. Merritt, I'd like to nominate a new Pam as uh, for the Office of President. I would like to nominate Doug Brooks for the Office of President. Any other nominations? All right, hearing none, um, we will begin with the uh, nomination of Anupam Chantikdu. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yep. Um, those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, nay. 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 So uh, motion carries, 5-0, I'm sorry, 5-2? Five 5-2. Two. Five two. Yes, so at that point, I'm just let's call to order. I don't take the other vote, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Learning, I apologize to. for that. So um, with that, I would say motion carries. Congratulations, President. Please come and assume your roles and take me out of my <laughs> <laughs> responsibilities. I think I do a better job as superintendent. <laughs> Do an excellent job of super. I appreciate yeah. it. I know my lane. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, as everyone is taking their suit uh, seat, please join me in recognizing the contributions of our past officers. Um, we've done excellent work here together as a team of eight in Plymouth Canton, and I just want to thank you personally and ask everybody to join me in thanking you for a job well done. Uh, thank you for the support, and uh, I'd just like to quickly say that I want to thank the previous board presidents for laying the foundation for great work that has been happening at Plymouth Canton. And I would like to thank Kate Berninski for her dedication and leadership to the board presidency work over the last two years. And I hope to continue building upon that great work as we move Plymouth Canton forward and moving us toward excellence. Um, also, that this is not about one person or an individual role or a title, but it is our collective work in making sure that we put students first and looking at student success as our priority. And I know everyone at this table is focused and dedicated and committed to that work. So I look forward to working with all of you, and thank you. And uh, now we move forward to nominations for a vice president. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to um, uh, nominate Patty McCoyne for vice president. Any other nominations for a vice president? Hearing none, all those in favor of Patty McCoyne as vice president, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Nay. Okay. Motion carries 6 1. 
And now we move next to nominations for secretary. Madam President, I'd like to nominate Doug Brooks as secretary. Any other nominations for secretary? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of Doug Brooks as secretary, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Okay, motion carries 7-0. Next, we look for treasurer nomination. Any nominations for treasurer? Madam President, I'd like to nominate Patrick Kehoe as treasurer. <laughs> Any other nominations for treasurer? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of Patrick Kehoe as treasurer for life, say aye. <laughs> aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries 7-0. Patrick was thinking about it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if, it was, if I had a choice. Zero choices. Thank you. Um, I think we should do the Pledge of Allegiance, right? We didn't do that. Should we do that at the um, do that beginning of the regular meeting? The, yeah, oh. do the regular meeting, yeah. Okay. So we call the motion or the meeting to order for a regular meeting. So roll call. No, no, no we still we have to do our work. Oh, we got to do the. Meeting. Thank you, we thank you, thank you. Thank you. I forget the formality of. <laughs> the once a year meeting? The once a year meeting. Once a year meeting. All right, so in our packet, we also got um, some of the protocols that we have to read through every year. So I'll actually start with my right, and if you could make a motion for approving the bylaws and then read the bylaws, and then we'll approve. I don't think you should yeah. be asking people to make a motion. Usually it's. Just read the bylaws? No. no just ask, make for a motion. A, ask for a motion, but don't ask certain people to make the motion. Okay. So can I have a motion to approve bylaws number 0164.1 and 0164.2? Madam President, I, I move that we uh, consider approval of, of bylaws 01- I'm sorry, what were the numbers? 0164.1. 0164.1 and 0164.2. Which is time and place and notification of meetings. And in the past, we read these out loud. Should we read those, we'll those yeah. at the end? Motions. Okay. All right. And, we'll and can I have a second? Madam okay. President, I'd like to second that motion. Thank you, Member Lazarowitz. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Sorry. Sorry. I think we should read them and then vote, but we can do that for the next. Okay. Thank you. All right. So should we read them now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, Doug, can I have you yes. read? From the very beginning here of the agenda? Just or where it says bylaw number 0164.1. Okay, bylaws number six or 064.1 and 0164.2, time, place, and notification of meeting. It was moved by member um, Kehoe. Kehoe. Kehoe and seconded by member um, Lazarowitz. Lazarowitz to adopt the following bylaws. Bylaw number, uh, bylaw number 0164.1, regular meetings dash time, place, and notification. Regular meetings of the Board of Education of the Plymouth Canton Community Schools, Wayne and Washtenaw Counties of Michigan shall be held on the second and fourth Tuesdays of each month in parentheses, except uh, there will be no meeting on the second Tuesday in July 2019. No meeting on the second Tuesday in August 2019, in parentheses, will be on the first Tuesday in August, close parentheses. And no meeting on the fourth Tuesday in December 2019, close parentheses, beginning at 7 p.m. at the following locations in parentheses, except as agreed herein, close parentheses, unless otherwise directed by the majority vote of the members. E. J. McClendon Educational Center, 454 South Harvey Street, Plymouth, Michigan, 48170. Continue? Yeah, please okay. continue. Bylaw number 0164.2, special meetings time, place, and notification. Special meetings of the Board of Education of the Plymouth Canton Community Schools, Wayne and Washtenaw Counties, Michigan, may be called by the President of the Board or any two members thereof by serving on the other 
members a written notice of the day, time, place, and such special meetings or by a majority vote of the board. Public notice of each meeting of the Board of Education shall be given by posting a copy of the notice in, uh, on the message board by the front office entrance to E.J. McLennan Educational Center, 454 South Harvey, Plymouth, Michigan, at least 18 hours prior to the time of the meeting. Executive Secretary of the Board of Education or other central office staff in her absence shall be appointed designee for posting notice of the meetings. Thank you. Since we've already done the voting on that, we'll move to the authorized signature for school district business. Right, we have to do a second question there. Right here. This one? That's a separate motion. No, right here. This one is to have the secretary um, advertise the bylaws. Okay. It's a separate, apparently. So, okay. <laughs> So can I have a motion for that one? Um, I move that we uh, direct the Secretary of the Board of Education to advertise bylaws number 0164.1 and 0164.2 in the Plymouth and Canton Observer newspapers. Seconded. Thank you. So we should probably read it first. Yes. Would you mind reading that, please? Sure. It was moved by Member McCoy and seconded by... Uh, Savage. Member Savage, Savage to direct the Secretary of the Board of Education to adversi advertise bylaws numbers 0164.1 and 0164.2 in the Plymouth and Canton Observer newspapers. Okay, now we take a motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Okay, motion carries 7 0. All right, next, moving on to the authorized signatures for school board or school district business. Can I have a motion for that one? Yes, I move that we. Uh, designate the, auth the, the authorized signatures for a set of documents as part of uh, our organizational meeting. I second it. Thank you. And I'll read could it. you read that? It was moved by Member Kehoe and seconded by Member Lazarowitz to authorize, authorize the following signatures for school district business. I'm going to list the documents and the authorized signature for each. A, administrator contracts. This is authorized by the president, secretary, or superintendent. B, teacher contracts. Subsection one, probationary by the president, secretary, or superintendent. Teacher contracts continuing tenure by the president, secretary, or superintendent. C, motor vehicle titles by the super, superintendent, chief finance and oper or, or chief finance and operations officer. Land contracts, president, secretary, or superintendent. Deeds E, deeds to, le real estate, to real estate, president, secretary, or superintendent. F, leases and easements, president, comma, secretary, superintendent, or chief finance and operations officer. G, deposit and investment accounts, president, comma, treasurer, superintendent, chief finance and operations officer, director of finance and accounting. H, vendor contracts, superintendent, Chief Finance and Operations Officer. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Okay, the motion carries 7 0. We're moving on to item 5. Can I have a motion for naming depository investment of monies and naming signatures for all funds? Madam President, I move that we name the depository and investment of monies and naming signatures for all funds. Second. Okay, it was moved by Member Kehoe and seconded by Member Brooks. It was moved by Member Kehoe and seconded by Member Brooks that the te Treasurer and or chief, chief Finance and Operations Officer be authorized to deposit all money for all funds of the Plymouth Canton Community Schools to the following banks. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Citizens Bank, Comerica, Community Financial Credit Union, Fifth Third Bank, Flagstar, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, North America, Michigan Liquid Asset Fund, Monroe Bank and Trust, Morgan Stanley, PNC Bank and PNC Capital Markets LLC, Public Trust Advisors LLC. And further, to invest all monies of all funds of the Plymouth Canton Community Schools in investments 
authorized under Section 1223 of the Michigan School Code of 1976 as amended, and further, that these banks be requested and authorized and directed to honor checks, checks, drafts, and other orders for payment of money drawn in the name of the Plymouth Canton Community Schools against the named funds when presented when bearing facsimile signature of Treasurer Patrick Kehoe and the facsimile sig signature of President Anupam Trixadu. And further, that the Huntington National Bank, comma, Bank of New York, and UMB Bank NA be designated as the paying agents for bonds of the Plymouth Canton Community Schools as required. And further, a blanket position bond be required for all school district employees in the amount of $100,000 and the cost of the bond be provided by the school district. Thank you. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? The motion carries 7-0. And could someone make a motion for part B of that? Madam President, I move that um, the Plymouth Canton Board of Education appoint legal counsel for the 2019-2020 school year at Collins and Blaha Law Firm PC. Seconded. Thank you. And part C of that, Member Berninski, could you please? Oh, you have to make a motion for that? There's no, no spot no, no, for that? You're right, you're right. I'm sorry, it's part C. Yes, you're correct. So can I have someone to make a motion for part C? I'll make that motion. Thank you. Second. All right. So Member, no, we don't have so to read that Kate, one? Kate I'll was going to make the motion. She just was right. OK. Sorry. Um, so naming other specific legal counsel as appointed by the Board of Education, it was moved by Member Borninski and seconded by Member Brooks to appoint other specific legal counsel as appointed by the Board of Education for 2019-2020, Clark Hill PLC, Lacey and Jones LLP, LaPointe and Associates PC, Miller Canfield, Paddock and Stone PLC, Thrun Law Firm PC. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion carries 7 0. And could I have someone to make a motion for Part D? Madam President, I move that we name, that we provide the naming of the school district auditor. Second. It was moved by Member Kehoe and seconded by Member McCoyne to appoint Platt Moran LLC certified public accountants as the school district auditors for 2019-2020. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion carries 7-0. And Part E, naming school district financial consultant. Could someone make a motion for that one, please? Yes, I move Part E to name the school district financial consultant to be the Public Financial Management Incorporated for 2019-2020. Support, I second. Okay. So it's moved by Member Kehoe and seconded by Member Borninski to appoint Public Financial Management Inc. as the school district's bond financial advisor for 2019-2020. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion carries 7-0. And the last one, to designate routine advertisement. I would like to make a motion that we designate routine advertisement. I second it. It was moved by Member McCoy and seconded by Member Lazarowitz that the Plymouth and Canton Observer or the Detroit Newspaper Agency newspapers be designated for the following routine advertisements. A, notice of budget hearing and truth and taxation hearing. B, invitation for bid. C, request for proposals. And that the Plymouth and Canton Observer or the bond buyer or the Detroit Legal News, as required, be designated for publication of A, call for redemption of bonds, B, sale of bonds, C, sale of tax anticipation notes, and small letter A, and that, the invita and that invitation for bids for major renovations, additions, and new constructions, PA 232 of July 21st, 2004, requires schools to post construction solicitations for a minimum of two weeks on the state of Michigan's Sigma Michigan website. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you for bearing with us on that as we take care of some of our bylaws that we have to do annually. 
And now we move to adopt the agenda and consent agenda for the regular meeting. So should we do a, another roll call before, before we do Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, so can we do a roll call starting from my left? I am uh, John Lazaritz. Thank you for coming out again. <laughs> Leonardo Savage, thank you for coming out. Patty McCoy, thank you for staying. <laughs> Anup, I'm Chick Sudhu, thanks for being here. Patrick Kehoe, thanks for staying this evening. Kate Borninski, still nice to see everyone. <laughs> Doug Brooks, thanks for coming out. All right, now we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, Dalton, would you please lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that. Now we are moving to part A, which is the adoption of the agenda, approval of the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? Madam President, I'd like to make a motion in the adoption of agenda of and approval of the consent agenda. Action item 20-07-01. I second it. Thank you. Any discussion on that? Okay, Superintendent Merritt, would you like to walk us through that? Yes. The Agenda this evening consists of human resources transactions since our last time together. We have new hires. If you look around the room, it is amazing to see these champions that we are hiring that have taken, they have all taken on the life's work of educating our young people. And what, isn't that just a wonderful uh, place to be? So we thank them for joining our team. We have a resolution for the approval of the curriculum coordinator as well as the administrative replacement for the principal of Bentley Elementary School. We have leaves, resignations, and retirements. We have the approval of minutes from our regular meeting on June the 25th, 2019. We have second reading of policy 6605, that's our crowdfunding policy, second read. We also have policy 7250.01, renaming existing facilities. This is our second read again. Finally, there's an action item to consider the approval of the tentative agreement with the Plymouth Canton Maintenance Association for your consideration. So do we take a vote on this before we get introductions? Yes. Okay, so all those in favor of the adoption of the agenda, approval of the consent agenda, action item number 20-07-01, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries 7-0. Good evening. I have the pleasure of introducing some new teachers to our school district, and we are very thankful that we have been able to hire all of these new champions for our students. So when I call your name, if you could come up, please. We would like to meet you. So Melissa Baker. Welcome, Melissa. Melissa will be an ASD teacher and a teacher consultant at Plymouth and the Goals Program. She comes to us with 11 years of experience with a bachelor's degree and a master's degree from Madonna College. Kaylee DeWeaver. Welcome, Kaylee. Kaylee is, comes to us with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Michigan University. She completed her student teaching at Halsing Elementary School, and she is going to be a new teacher at Hoban Elementary School. Kelsey Drewer. Hi, Kelsey. Kelsey is going to be a co-teacher in the resource room and also focusing on mathematics at Canton High School. She comes to us with five years of experience with a bachelor's degree from Grand Valley State University. Jessica Hanoon. Jessica comes to us with five years of experience. She is our new resource room teacher at Tonda Elementary School with a bachelor's degree from Central Michigan University and a master's degree from Oakland University. Kiana Jordan. Hi, Kiana. Kiana comes to us from Michigan State University, and she will be teaching at Erickson Elementary School. Matthew Knetz. Matthew is our new math teacher at Canton High School. He comes to us with a bachelor's degree from the University of Michigan, as well as five years teaching experience. Welcome, Matthew. Leanne LaFrada. 
Leanne comes to us with seven years of experience with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Michigan University, and she will be our new Spanish teacher at East Middle School. Allison Mann. Allison um, graduated from the University of Michigan Ann Arbor, and she is a new teacher at Tonda Elementary School. Welcome, Megan Mila. Megan graduated from Grand Valley State University, and she will be working at Madonna as an ASD teacher. Welcome, Megan. Christelle Rosala Javtova. Christelle is going to be teaching science at Canton High School. She has a doctorate degree from the University of Lyon, France. Welcome. Nora Reyes. Welcome, Nora. She comes to us with five years of experience. She will be an elementary classroom teacher at Hoban School, and she has a bachelor's degree from Wayne State University. Sean Salmonin. Welcome, Sean. Sean comes to us with six years of experience. He also taught at an international school in China, and he has a bachelor's degree from Eastern Michigan University, a master's degree from University of New York, and he will be teaching at Bird Elementary School. Michelle Snyder. Michelle is a new teacher here at Plymouth High School and she will be teaching science. Welcome Michelle. She comes to us with two years of experience as well as a bachelor's degree from Eastern Michigan University. Tracy Welch Kinnick. Tracy is going to be a new social worker here in the district and she will be working at Plymouth High School as well as the goals program. She comes to us with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Michigan University and a master's degree from University of Michigan. Joseph Wiley. Welcome, Joseph. He is going to be a new language arts teacher at Liberty Middle School. He comes to us with nine years of experience, a bachelor's degree from Eastern Michigan University and a master's degree of the American College of Education. Alyssa Zaharia. Welcome, Alyssa. She is our new speech pathologist at Dotson Elementary School with a master's degree from University of Toledo, Ohio, and a bachelor's degree from Michigan State University. So welcome. You will all remember each other because you were all hired on the same night. <laughs> and when you see each other in the district, you're going to remember that. I still remember who I was hired with in 1989. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome you. It was, it's so nice to see all of you because I've spoken to you on the phone and we know you're going to be champions for our kids. And so we want you to come around, shake our hands, and we're going to give you our candy bar. But you've got to remember what order you're in. Melissa, you were first. Congratulations, welcome to board. Congratulations, Congratulations. Okay. Paddle neck there. Welcome. Yeah. That's a lot of people here. Congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome to the board. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Welcome to the district. Congratulations. Nice to put a face to it. Yeah. Congratulations, Michelle. Thank you. And I know you're in the same some more exciting news this evening I would like to announce that our new curriculum coordinator for K-12 mathematics as well as K-5 visual and performing arts is Katherine Williams. She has an educational specialist degree from Oakland University. She has been a teacher in our school district, an assistant principal at Workman. 
She was an elementary principal in Dearborn Heights, and she has been the principal of Bird Elementary School since 2011. And we look forward to her moving to this new position and taking us to the next level in these content areas. So welcome. Okay, and why we have the audience of the Bentley Bobcats is because of the new principal at Bentley. Well, come on up, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> so in front of you, we have Jan Douglas. I don't even need notes because I've known her for so long. But Jan comes to us with a master's degree from Eastern Michigan University. She taught at Fiegel Elementary School as well as Pioneer Middle School. And she taught at Pioneer as a science teacher and a language <coughs> arts teacher. Then she moved to be the instructional coach in our district in math and science. And then she served as a student support coordinator under two principals, first at Hoban Elementary School and then at Erickson Elementary School. And so, Jan, we are so proud of you and we are so excited that you are now going to be the new principal at Bentley Elementary School. Congratulations. And do you have a few words you want to share with us? Thank you. I just want to say I am so honored to be the next principal of Bentley Elementary and to serve that community. I feel so fortunate to be able to take this next step in a district like PCCS that is so committed to equity and excellence in education for all students. Um, so it's just with great excitement that I'm able to fulfill my dream of becoming a principal in the same district that I started my career in public education. I would like to thank um, members of the Bentley staff for coming this evening. I am so appreciative and am looking forward to collaborating with you as we serve all of our young Bobcats. I would also like to thank um, Mr. Kevin Learned, who was uh, my principal last year. Um, I'm so grateful to him for developing leadership capacity in me, and um, I'll be forever grateful. Uh, I truly can't wait for the school year to start so that I can meet um, all of the Bentley students and get to know them and their families. I am looking forward to being a champion for all of them as the next Bentley principal. Go Bobcats! So next, I would just like to thank two fine teachers for their service in our district. They are retiring, and they're going on to their next step in life and their next journey. And it is Lynn Gordon, the media specialist from middle school from um, Miller Elementary School, as well as Jan Hassey, who was a teacher at Dotson School who serviced students with ASD, and she also worked in our district for over 35 years. So congratulations to Lynn Gordon and Jan Hassey. Okay, we are uh, now moving on to part C, which is board committee reports. Uh, the president report, well, obviously, I don't have any to, to start it, but I would like to give um, Kate Berninski an opportunity to talk about anything else that had happened under the president role over the last few weeks. I don't have any report. Okay. Um, the next is Student Performance and Achievement Committee, which I chair and we have not met over the last month, so there's no updates on that one. Policy Committee? Uh, we have also not met since uh, June. We will be meeting again in August. Finance and Operations, Patrick Kehoe. So we have not met since yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so we met last night uh, uh, here in the, the board office and we discussed uh, some of the capital Im improvement projects that are on the agenda for this evening. Uh, we do not have another meeting scheduled at this time. Okay. And the Educational Excellence Foundation report, Kate Berninski. So usually we have um, members of the EEF board here to make a report for us because I'm boring. Um, but nobody's here tonight because um, I think our schedule this time kind of threw them off. So I want to put out a um, plug for the Back to School Bash 
which will be Saturday, August 24th. And um, it's a huge event. It's really, ex it's a lot of fun. It's for, it's a family friendly event and um, the EEF will be there and so will lots of people from PCCS. Um, and it's going to be held as usual at Canton's Heritage Park. So I hope that everyone can come out for that. Thank you for that. And that is an exciting event. So encourage everybody in the community to attend. Uh, part D is citizens' comments. Do we have any citizens' comments? Please bring up your paper, Dalton. Thank you. You know the routine, three minutes. Do we have a timer? Do we need a? I can. You can do the timer. Thank you, Liz. Am I good? Yes. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Dalton Barthold. I'm a former student of Canton High School. And um, this is my first board meeting as a graduate, so I'm excited to be back and keep talking about things. Um, recently, I visited Livonia Stevenson High School because they got a brand new performing arts center, which was very nice. Um, it was about a $1.5 million um, renovation for all of the three Livonia high schools. And so seeing their performing arts center made me think of our own and um, just the things that come from that. And so I just wanted to share that about how other districts are renovating, doing good things for their performing arts. Um, that is basically all I had to give an update about. I come here and talk about the same thing for about 16 meetings now. And so um, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizens' comments? OK, thank you. We'll move on to Part E, administrative reports and recommendations. So superintendent's report is first. Yes, and I will be brief this evening. As you can see, we've been busy hiring champions, and that's the work that we've been doing each and every day. So we have quite a few openings. I encourage those in the community that want to be a part of this amazing team to check that website to see if there's openings in which you are qualified and put your name in, because uh, we are working hard to make sure that we are ready to start the school year off with um, everybody on bus who's prepared with the right direction with the focus on getting what's best for kids also around the uh, district uh, we have some summer projects happening so if people are out and about you'll see the construction of our sally ports which are our secured entryways for all of our schools um, that are on uh, track to get that done this summer as well as the installation of cameras <coughs> and the final piece is that we are tacking clean vigilantly because we are making sure that our buildings are ready for the start of school so I'll continue to update you on that work as we work through the summer but that will be how we spend our days here thank you for that update um, part two of that is finance and operations and we have an action item Madam president I move that we consider approval of resolution for bid packages 19 um, paving and parking lot parking lot upgrades district-wide, bid package 20, exterior improvements district-wide, and bid package 21, miscellaneous renov renovations district-wide. This would be a first and final reading. Action item is 200702. Second. Thank you. It, motion was made by Member Kehoe, seconded by Member Brooks. Any discussion on that? Okay. So, Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, just to update the, the community and those watching at home, um, this is to proceed with the design and bid process for a number of uh, capital improvements throughout the district that have been rated as our highest priorities. And these are using existing bonds that, uh, that were, will intend to use existing bonds that were from uh, previous uh, uh, voted um, bonds from the community. They're, at this point, we're only sending these projects out for design and, uh, and bid work, they will come back before the board as we get those, uh, those quotes and those bids to come through for actual approval to go, go ahead with this work. Did you want to walk us through that, Debbie, or 
Are we good? Yep. We, we've come to the board before with a list of priorities. These are the remaining bonds that were originally elected in uh, May of 2013 and sold in three series, one in 2013, one in 2015, and the final series sold earlier this year in 2019. Those three series together have a certain dollar, um, um, a couple million dollars worth of, uh, more than that, but uh, um, some money left over, and these are the projects that we will seek to design, go out to bid, bring back to the FNO committee, bring back to the Board of Education for both a first and second read and be awarded um, to be done in the spring and summer of 2020 so we are definitely planning ahead thank you and, and just for context around this we're doing these as a first and second uh, or first and final. final read because we need to get moving with the uh, the approvals on this process in order to meet the time frames for next year there's an extensive number of projects they're not all huge but they need to all be considered and, and there's a fair amount of design work that needs to be done on those any other discussion? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Okay. Motion carries 7 0. <coughs> and the other parts are just first reading, so we're. Okay. Next no, first, no, and first, first and final. They're both first and final. Yeah. The JV track? Yeah. It's yes. a first and final reading. Why do I have first? First reading original, if you printed it before the FNL yeah. meeting, we changed yeah. it yesterday to first and final. So. <laughs> okay. Can I borrow your yes, notes? <laughs> All right. We have another action item. Do I have a motion for action item number 20-07-03? Madam President, I'd like to make a motion for action item 20-07-03 for consider approval of resolution for the JB track and field soil stabilization first and final reading. Support. Second. Second. Thank you. Motion was made by Member Lazarowitz, seconded by Member Kehoe. Any discussion on that one? So I have a question. Um, I saw an article in the newspaper, The Observer, about this online. And um, I'm just confused about the timeline on this because you said it came to FNO yesterday. Yeah, we've, we've talked about the project before, but this particular uh, activity came to FNO yesterday. Okay. So I just find it interesting that the Observer has an article that was published this morning on this. Yeah, I haven't seen the article. I've, uh, Monica, can you mm -hmm. give us some context around the article? I, I believe the article is just uh, describing what you will be considering um, this evening and I'll ask maybe uh, Debbie to take us through the process so this was discussed at FNO on Monday evening as we're going through the process of uh, the field at Plymouth and um, I think with all of the raining conditions uh, they had some um, yeah I can yes I can provide do you want to do it Debbie or no, me go ahead. so we met on this process uh, yesterday so uh, a while ago the board had approved the the project to um, to do the resurfacing and and uh, and creating a um, excuse me uh, I can't remember what what artificial, artificial, artificial turf artificial turf thank you <laughs> artificial turf at the JV track this would provide us uh, a secondary field that could be used in the event of scheduling conflicts with our primary uh, varsity field and so this JV field would be able to be used for, for practice for sports for band for other activities the work that had been uh, considered as part of this project was to take up the existing uh, soil and to be able to put in a artificial uh, turf there that that artificial turf is supported by a, uh, a, a a gravel or a rock foundation base and then the artificial turf is put on top of that during the proofing or testing of that process they discovered that there were subsoil conditions that would not make that process be, uh, be work correctly now originally we had done soil samples as part of that process in the construction period there have been seven soil samples that have been uh, done at, at that time and those soil samples had not indicated any problems with the uh, the subsurface soils that were uh, that were there Unfortunately, because of the nature of the, the very wet and heavy spring that we had, as well as the very wet summer, there were additional problems that were identified as part of the sub, 
soil uh, conditions there, that it's a clay-based soil that also has uh, a high amount of organic matter that does not make it so that it's a stable soil surface. And then if we don't remediate those soils uh, now, then we will end up having a problem uh, later on where we'll have a, a wavy or a rippled uh, uh, surface for the ar artificial turf. So the, the action item that we're proposing here is, is to do a stabilization project on that turf. The, there were two options to do for the stabilization. One was to do um, a undercutting, removing all of the soil, and then adding in new, um, uh, new soil and new uh, rock as part of that process to a depth of about 12 inches. There were some concerns with that process because you might have a never-ending problem that would come up. You take that out and you discover more problems and you discover more problems. It was also the more expensive option. So the option that's being proposed here is one where it is a, um, a concrete uh, remediation where they essentially till up the soil as part of that process and they add in a concrete stabilizer as part of that, which will lock in any of the organics that we have there as well as provide a stable base for the artificial turf that will go above that. So that t soil will be tilled up uh, to a depth of, I believe, 18 inches and then we'll have that concrete added as part of that process and then they'll have the, the, the stone base on top of that and then the artificial per turf on top of that. This project uh, originally uh, had anticipated some remediation of the soil that we had budgeted about $20,000 for soil remediation and that we had, because we had seen some uh, areas that we suspected that, that we might see those kinds of problems for undercutting or fixing those things. We've used a small amount of that money already so some portion of that $20,000 will be used to offset the cost that we're voting on here this evening. We also had a contingency that had been included as part of this project of roughly $80,000. And that contingency would also be used to help offset some of these costs. There were other costs that were included as part of the contingency, including an alternate structure that we had included as part of the original voting, which was to add a, uh, um, a storage shed on the, uh, um, the JV track grounds. That storage shed had been, we did not anticipate these soil problems. We got further into this project, and so that storage shed had already been uh, procured and purchased, and we are not able to turn that back. So that was coming also out of the, um, the contingency money that we have. We believe that there'll be roughly $40,000 of contingency funds uh, offsetting this cost here of $132,000, as well as uh, the remainder of the $20,000 that had been allocated but we're approving the process here this evening for the, the full cost of the project with the contingency will, that will come back to, the, uh, to the, the, the bond fund just as we do with any other uh, um, extra contingencies that come back at the end of uh, the project. So I don't know if that answered your questions. So I was just, um, I just found the timing interesting um, and it made me wonder but I also wanted to clarify that although um, on this sort of chart we have that says the different options, um, and option two is the 132, um, $132,000 and some change. Um, the letter has that first, so I just want to clarify that option two is the cheaper um, option. Yes, the, the $132,000 for the concrete stabilization is the option that we're choosing. It's less than, I believe, I don't have the, num the numbers directly in front of me, but I believe it's $147,000 okay, $147, for the non- Right, I just uh, didn't for the want undercutting. anyone to, if they just only looked at this document, then they might think that option two was the first one. Got it. Got it. Because we didn't list the two options in the process. You only see that in the subsequent yeah. Although documents. Although the resolution has it correct. Yes. Thank you for well, clarifying that. Yeah. I, and then for the, as far as the article in the paper goes, I was just curious about the timing of that because it seemed like they got their information very quickly. So, so I, I, we um, added this information as a potential first read on um, Friday as a part of the board packet, but we didn't have the FNO meeting until Monday to have an opportunity to review 
that information and that's where we updated the board packet to include the final first and final looking really to a timing aspect so that we can get out and make sure that that remediation is taken care of so that we can get the track and the field completed before the start of school as long as the weather cooperates with us if we approve this as a first and final this evening we should be able to get this finished before the uh, the teams need to use this that this um, this year any other discussion on this Okay, hearing none all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed motion carries 7-0 and we have another action item 20-07-04 Madam President, I'd like to make a motion for action item 20-07-04. 20, 20 Consider approval of resolution for the PCEP tennis court repairs first and final reading. I support, I support that. Or I second. Sorry. Thank you. Motion was made by Member Lazarowitz and seconded by Member Berninski. <laughs> Any discussion on that? Mr. President, you don't so uh, just to provide some background for those of you that were not at the FNO meeting, um, the tennis courts were installed in um, 2002, and they have approximately a 20-year life. We've started see seeing cracks in the asphalt and the tennis courts over the last couple of years. In 2016, we did some repairs uh, that involved putting a mesh tape over those cracks and that helps to provide the best quality repair uh, of that process. That mesh tape repair process has got a five-year warranty on it. We have some of those cracks that have, have developed since then have been covered under the warranty. They're things that, that uh, will be able to be repaired as part of the warranty process, but there's additional cracks that have materialized as well as extensions on those cracks that would not be covered under warranty. We're proposing again to do the mesh tape process on this as opposed to the caulk process. Uh, the mesh tape is, we had an extensive conversation on this at the uh, uh, FNO meeting yesterday. The mesh tape process uh, generally has got a lifetime of uh, between uh, three and five years. And so it will provide a, a stronger, smoother, more stable surface than the caulk process. We do suspect that there will need to be uh, ultimately a full replacement of these tennis courts and that we'll consider that in potentially in a future bond project. But this should help guide us through to that time when we, uh, when we do that work. Any other discussion on this? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. And now we're at follow-up board questions, and I know we had quite a few board notes, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the outstanding items, and it looks like most of them were sent to us in board notes, including analysis of parent concerns, start time analysis of school calendar and start time separated, different ways of teachers reporting cleanliness issues, follow up on parent and community members verbatim, and the estimated cost of elections. Those had been taken care of in board notes. Um, based on what I read, we have three outstanding items, right? The custodial new benchmarks, cross-reference of staff cleanliness report with KPI, and the cross-reference of the staff cleanliness report with the school due data. That's correct. And we also had some new requests that came out of um, last um, evening's meetings. Yeah. So the three that you reference, we'll have those in uh, Friday in board notes this week. Thank and you. then the new request that came out of last evening, you can help me remember those. One was we were looking at the um, participation for athletics and activities for all of the. I have a list at home. Okay. And I know you took. Yes. So list. yeah, I don't have them in front of me. Okay. So we can capture those. Great. Um, we also had a technology plan request uh, to come from Mark, Mark Salzer with the items that would be recommended. Um, moving forward a breakdown of those technology items um, I think those were the two big ones and we'll make sure that we capture any other questions that were asked last night that you don't know those are the two that I remember but um, we'll make sure we capture those okay. there were I think at least one or two more okay perfect all right thank you uh, we are at the adjournment so we can move on to our special meeting about board governance do you have a motion to adjourn uh, Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I second it. Thank you. Motion was made by Member Brooks and seconded by Member Lazarowitz. Any discussion? Okay, just uh, for the community that's here in the room, uh, the special meeting is, uh, is still a public meeting. You're welcome to attend uh, and stay. Uh, it will not be recorded, but uh, you're, you're welcome to stay here in the room, and we encourage you to come in the future to see them live because that's where the excitement happens. <laughs>
Okay, thank you. All those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries 7-0. Thank mm -hmm. you.